how do you treat your wife with gentleness? We're going to talk about that. How do you allow gentleness to impact your marriage in a much more positive way than you have been doing before? Uh, I'm going to share you, with you some of the challenges, why it's not easy to bring gentleness into your marriage. And I'm going to share with you how you can keep gentleness in your marriage and impact your marriage for good. All right. So we're going to start with prayer. Prayer is always important because when we pray, we bring the power of God into the situation. All right, Father, I thank you. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for those who are live with me right now, especially the men. Thank you because you have a call upon their lives to lead their homes, to lead their wives, and leadership in your kingdom means service. So, Lord, I pray that as we discuss today, that you would bring light into everywhere that there may be darkness, and you bring clarity where there's confusion. Let faith arise in the heart of my brother, my sisters, to also know that you are working and you always work. You never stop. You're working to bring them to the next level of impact, ne next level of joy, next level of peace. Yes, we stand together against every challenge that the enemy may have put across their path. Declare that none of that will prosper, only your will will stand. We declare healing, healing, emotional, uh, physical, spiritual healing for everyone who's listening to this or watching it. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, so welcome again. And uh, remember, if you are being blessed by this channel and you're not yet subscribed, subscribe so that you can get notifications when I go live and you can get notifications when I post a new video. You can also um, com uh, share this with anyone that you believe will be benef uh, will benefit from it. And when you do that, when you comment, when you share, when you like, um, the algorithm would realize that this is something good and they will share with other people. So when you share, you're not only helping me reach more people, you're also doing your part as a believer in helping people know God more and live better lives. So let's get to the scriptures today. Galatians chapter 5, verse 23. We have been looking at 22. And when we looked at 22, we talked about seven different ways of looking at love. Let's review them. Love, uh, sorry, uh, the fruit of the spirit. And of course, it's love. And all of these things are the same. They are the fruit of the Spirit. So we, love, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. Fruit of the Spirit is forbearance or patience. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness, goodness, faithfulness. We'll talk about those ones. All right. And today we're going to talk about the next one, which is gentleness. The fruit of the spirit is gentleness. So we're going to talk about that. What is gentleness? Why is it important? Why is it difficult? Why do people, why do men need to be gentle? Why do you need to be gentle as a husband? Let's talk about that. Let's start from what makes it difficult for many men to be gentle. The first thing is that you may not be wired <laughs> to be gentle in the first place. In other words, most men are progressive, uh, protective, aggressive by, by, by gen, uh, genealogy and by the fact that we in originally we, we, we go out as men to go find the food um, while women, women take care of their home. And the men, and of course, they take care of the home because they are the ones that bear the children and so feed them when they are younger. And the man is the one that goes and finds foods and so it's, has to fight and fend off wild animals and, and all of that. And so over the years, we develop this aggressive lifestyle. And you want to protect your territory, you need to be ag aggressive to fight and to do all of that. 
And so when you think about gentleness, you may not be thinking about a, an aggressive man, but you can be strong and uh, um, you can be decisive and gentle. So we're going to talk about more of that. What is gentleness? What are the aspects of gentleness? Seven point least of what gentleness contains, uh, contains softness. Gentleness involves softness, avoiding harshness or severity. Gentleness um, consists of or involves calmness. So not just softness, calmness, remaining peaceful and composed. Calmness. It consists, it uh, involves consideration, think, thinking about others, others' feelings and needs. Thinking about others' feelings and needs. Empathy. Empathy. Understanding and sharing the feelings of others. These are all components of gentleness. Humility. Being modest and unassuming. Thoughtfulness. Showing care and attention to details. Tender-heartedness, being sensitive and compassionate. All of these are what gentleness involves. All of this. So when a person is gentle, they are soft, calm, considerate, empathetic, humble, thoughtful, and tender-hearted. And you may wonder, how can I be that for a wife who is not respectful and so there are so many things that your wife may have done to you that makes you not to be gentle in your own um your own uh, opinion you may be thinking you know what it is impossible to be gentle with this woman because she has all these characteristics that are very terrible and i cannot afford to be gentle with her because if i'm gentle with her She's going to grow wings. That's what her, um, our uh, elders used to say to us when we were younger. That you guys are becoming bold to do things that are wrong. And they said they call that growing wings. Anyway, you know, husbands may say, a wife who is disrespectful, I cannot be gentle with her. Because if you're gentle with her, she is going to become more disrespectful. First, I want to say to you, gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. Is the if the fruit of the spirit is what gentleness. In other words, if you are a child of God and the Holy Spirit lives in you, the proof of that is that you'll be gentle. And in in the same line, if you are not gentle. And you're not increasing in gentleness. It could be that you're not yielding to the Holy Spirit in you. It could also be that you don't have the Holy Spirit in you at all. It is possible to bear the name of Christian and not be one. It is possible to bear the name of a believer and not have any relationship or interaction with God. So, if you find that gentleness is not increasing in you, and any of the seven things that we've talked about so far, today is the eighth one, um, love is not increasing in you, joy is not increasing in you, peace is not increasing in you, patience is not increasing in you, kindness is not increasing in you, uh, none of those are increasing in you, then maybe you do not have the spirit in you. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, then you want to work on it. You want to go back and surrender your life to Jesus as your Lord. Lord means he controls everything that concerns you. He directs you. He guides you. He shows you the way. And that's what it means to be the Lord. So if he's not your Lord, then you need to work on that. Work on that. So you... You may have a wife that's disrespectful. That means she acts in a way that she's trying to change you. And that can be very frustrating for a man. Because God designed us as men to be a representative of him. So we're not looking for someone to control us. 
no man got married to his wife so that he can um so that she, like she can treat him like her son that's not going to happen no man's going to take that from you as a wife yes and so whenever you say your wife is treating you as if she's your mother you're going to revolt and you're going to react but that doesn't mean that you can you must do that in a harsh way you can still be soft in the in in uh expressing your firm decision all right so you may be married to an insecure wife who's always watching and acting as if you are unfaithful um, an insecure wife i remember a, a man whose wife was always accusing him always accusing him if he looks a little bit uh, at a woman she's going to say oh you want to go out with her She's going to, she says, I don't know what he's talking about all the time. He's always on his uh, phone. He doesn't give me his phone. I don't have the password to his phone. He's cheating on me always. Now, the man could be doing something, but I know that it is possible that you have an insecure wife. And an insecure wife can be a stress. And when she continues to nag at you, there's that temptation to be rough with her so that she can know how serious you are and take the necessary action to leave you be however if you treat her like that take note that you have to keep doing that to let her to make her leave you be and you are setting up your marriage for a very destructive end because you are not her god as a husband you are not the god of your wife so if she is being nagging, if she's nagging and you want to stop that, being harsh or rude doesn't work. It works temporarily though, because if you shout at the top of your voice and say, leave me be, I've not shitted on you, woman. She may calm down for a day because she sees that you're really angry and that she's getting in under your skin. But what you've done is you've, you've, created fear in her heart she doesn't feel safe anymore in your space and that's the seed that eventually lead to her walking away from the marriage because no one also wants to live their life for the the rest of their life unsafe so the challenge with marriage is that it can be very beautiful if it's beautiful and you may be thankful that you have the rest of your life to live with your wife but it can also be very horrible when you see the weakness of your spouse or your wife at this point because i'm talking to you man if you are feeling if you feel that look this weakness is too much for me i can't bear it for another day then thinking about the fact that you're going to bear it for the rest of your life can be very difficult and that's why some people stop being gentle they just go harsh and rude so that the wife will stop their behavior so you may have a wasteful wife who keeps spending money without thinking about the consequences. If that's the case, you may be tempted to become really rude to get her attention. So most times when people are harsh, rude, difficult, get angry, it's because they want to get an atten the attention of their spouse and they want to control the behavior so that it doesn't hurt them, so that it doesn't put them in a place that they don't want to be. And I want to say to you, it is possible to get the same results without using those same tools and it may be difficult for you to believe because all your life including before you got married you've always believed that in order to get attention you have to scream at the top of your voice you have to be rude you have to be um in someone's face you have to not think about their their own benefits you have to think about yourself because nobody will do that for you that's your flesh and we're going to talk about the flesh after this how the flesh operates and comes into the marriage to destroy it right now we're talking about how to love unconditionally and unconditional love is gentle so you may have an uncooperative wife or in your own opinion i've had men heard, heard men say this disobedient wife you may have one and that means when you agree on something she goes and does the opposite when she wants to make a big decision for the family she doesn't even remember to consult you and even when you agree to to uh, tell her what to do she says i'm not going to do that because she has our, our own ways of doing things and she has a mind of her own and you may wonder 
if I continue to be gentle with her, will she continue like this? All of these things I'm sharing with you because those are the feelings that you may have that makes you want to be more harsh and more to, to show more anger, forcefulness. Uh, but all of that doesn't make a good marriage. It destroys. It removes uh, peace in, from the home. It removes um, security. So your wife becomes afraid to stay around you because you are not gentle with her. You're not, you're not treating her with the care that she deserves and desires. Everyone desires that. Just like you also would like someone to be gentle with you. Imagine you hurt your leg or you hurt your back and you go to the, to the hospital. You want the nurse to be gentle with you. The fact that you're hurt is even when you need more gentleness, right? The same, if your wife is any of this that I've just described, disrespectful, insecure, wasteful, uncooperative, unfaithful even, um, flirting around, all of these things, all of these things are the reason why you should be gentle with them because you're going to have to be firm with them. So gentle but firm. We're going to talk about that as we go on. Let's get to some scriptures about gentleness that I would like to show you so you can see that this is it's not something that is only in one portion of scriptures. The, the, the fruit of the Spirit is all over scriptures and gentleness is one of those so here in philippians chapter 2 verse 3 the apostle paul is writing to the philippians church and in the new Inter international version it says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourself humility is a component of gentleness and it means you value your wife above yourself in New Living Translation, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourself. Others includes your wife. Think of her as better than yourself. What does that even mean? That means that you value her and believe that God has sent her to be a blessing to you and she's of great value, greater value than you value yourself. You elevate her. Not diminish yourself, but elevate her because of the Holy Spirit that is in her. And treat her with that respect. That's what the scripture is saying there. Not only her though, every believer and everybody around you value them as priceless, valuable. I honor you. I take you as precious. Um, and I'm going to submit to the Holy Spirit who owns you on how to deal with you. I will not just deal with you carelessly. When you when you are harsh to your wife, when you treat her um, carelessly, remember you are treating the one who sent her. You are treating the one who owns her and who created her. So be careful with that. Another scripture, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. New International Version. Be completely humble and gentle. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. When you learn to bear with your wife because you love her, you will be gentle with her. Gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit in you, brings forth gentleness. If you yield to the Holy Spirit, you will be gentle. If you don't yield to the Holy Spirit, you will not be gentle. And if you resist the Holy Spirit long enough, you will not be able to keep your salvation eventually you will say i don't even believe you i don't even take you as real and that's how you can lose your faith but what's important right now is yielding to the holy spirit so that he can continue to work his work in you don't resist his working of gentleness in you and it has great impact on your marriage. First, it, it, it impacts your thoughts. It impacts your communication with one another. And it makes your wife feel more peace, more uh, safe in your presence with you. And she makes her open up more to you to talk about you. Of course, it will increase your intimacy with one another because when you're gentle, she will believe that you care, that you are able to handle her with with care and she would draw closer to you because 
everyone wants to be pampered and cared for. So gentleness is it is it the fruit of the spirit and it's very important in really moving your marriage forward. Do not think that a gentle person is a weak person. Gentleness is not weak. It's gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. Now, if you struggle with gentleness, you find that you're always harsh. You're always uh, speaking at the top of your voice. You don't remember to think about all, how other people other people feel. You don't remember to uh, check how what you're about to say would come out and affect others you are you find it difficult to think about the intentions of others and you only think about how they made you feel you're always quick to respond to how it makes you feel why did you speak to me like that you're so mean you just find yourself reacting very quickly then do this talk to the holy spirit and say dear holy spirit i know that you are in me and you are a gentle spirit Gentleness is a fruit of yours in my life. I tap into gentleness today. And from now on, I operate with gentleness. Now, once you start with that, you're turning your mind. You're beginning to operate with gentleness in your thoughts. So that's where you start from. Always start from your thoughts. Always make up your mind that you, you think gently. You think in a way that makes you gentle to your wife. You're not her father, remember? You can treat her like you would treat your daughter. You are not her God. You are not her protector. You can be used by God to protect her, but God is her protector. That's just like God is your protector. You're God's messenger to love her. God's messenger of love. You have been sent by God to show her how much he loves her. You are also her leader. Your leader in your team of two, there has to be a leader in any team. You are the one to lead. And to lead in the kingdom is to serve. You are a source of inspiration. Remember that. And these are the ways you become calmer in your, in your ways of acting. Now, I, I can assure you that listening to this or watching this will not automatically make you gentle tomorrow. But the seed is being sown and you'll be amazed after a couple of months of practice how you will change. So once you begin to think about who you are to your wife, you're not a judge or helper, you're not an accuser either, you are a supporter to help her become more. So as you think about all this, and you begin to think about where you want to take your wife to as a leader, um, that which is to obey God more and to serve God better, you will find that gentleness will be a tool to get you there faster. Than the other way the other way is just to protect you to make life easier for you it's not to get her the result of being more impactful closer to god more obedient to god and, and but if your wife is getting closer to god more obedient to god she's going to get closer to you too because you are getting closer to god and if you allow god's love to flow in you it's going to trigger the emotions the the the, the attractions the fondness that you want and that you crave and that you desire as married couples. So do not underestimate the power of gentleness and start to practice it in your thoughts. Then your words, practice gentleness in your words. Whenever you speak words that are harsh, stop and rephrase. Don't say that is a very stupid idea. No, say I do not think that you're going to do that. Why? What is the reason behind that? Or how did you come up with that idea? Not, and there's a t tone that you can say that. How did you come up with that idea that means that you're so dumb that you come up with such a foolish idea? You don't want to be harsh like that. Your words, when you speak your words and you feel that this is harsh, it's not the way you want someone to talk to you. Then you, you repent and you go back again. So your thoughts, your words, your thoughts, your words, your attitude, the way you come across, you Think about it to be gentle. Listen more. Listen more. And speak less. Don't speak right without thinking uh, about the impact. Think a little bit more about the impact. And and, cor and repent or, or apologize whenever you have said something wrong. So as you listen attentively, reflect on what you're, you're doing and saying. And always think about the fact that I want my wife. I, 
after encountering me in any way to be able to say, I feel loved. I feel pampered. I feel cared for. Even when you're correcting and saying that this behavior is not right. This is not what God has for you. And I'm not going to be able to stand um, with you to, as if you continue like that. I'm not going to as, accept that. I'm not going to be a part, a party to this behavior. You can say that with gentleness. I'm not going to be a party to this behavior if this is how you have chosen to go on and you will have to move on. But you can say that gently. <laughs> That's a very hard thing to say. It looks like you are um, threatening them. But that's when we are at the top, at the place where she is being either um, unfaithful or disrespectful um, in such a way that she is maybe verbally abusive or physically abusive. And you want to really get the attention that this is not right and you're not going to stand for that. You have to say that I'm not going to stand for that. And you, but you can't just say, I'm not going to stand for that. There has to be something you're going to do if they don't change. And it doesn't involve violence. It doesn't involve abuse. It simply involves you taking control and taking charge of what you can control, which is you uh, and how you're going to deal with the situation. It could be things like, um, for a person, why that's wasteful. I'm going to have to disconnect, um, the joint account and I'm going to allow you to spend your money the way you want. And um, I would manage whatever is left to take care of the family. Those are some of the things that you have to say. And you can say them gently. You don't have to be angry to say them. Now, we get angry and the Lord designed that so that we can speak up. Because a lot of times people can't, won't speak up. But you want to be able to speak up. All right. So that's a long one today because it's something that most men do not really look up, look for. Because they assume that being aggressive, being there speaking, being very jovial and being, uh, you know, very speaking forcefully, being outspoken and not taking any um, mess from your wife will it makes you like a man, like a, a real man. No, no, no. That's not what makes you a man. What makes you a man is when you can inspire your wife to follow you, inspire your wife to imitate you feel when your wife looks up to you that's what you really want and you don't have to be rush rough harsh to do that you can do that with gentleness yes because gentleness removes the attempt of the enemy to bring division in your midst all right so if what i've been saying to you has impacted you helped you and you are men out there you love the lord you're doing very well in your in other areas of your work and um, you are doing well with your business, your finances, your ministry, your community, but you are not doing well in your marriage. There's a struggle there and you want help from someone to help you hit that goal quickly and permanently. Then you will need to reach out to me. And the first way to do that and the best way to do that is to sign up for my masterclass by going to adisobanjo.com slash masterclass. I'm going to be sharing with you five steps that you must take to transform your marriage build it again from scratch and anyone who is a believer that has a great marriage has already followed those five steps i have followed them and other people millions of people over the years i didn't invent these five steps i found them in scripture i've been following them i've been teaching them and they've been helping others i want to show them to you uh, this one that we're talking about today is just one of those steps uh, one, of course in details i'm going to share those five steps with you all right may the lord continue to strengthen you as you uh take this step towards your marriage now if you just want uh, uh, a way to rebuild friendship in your marriage and you're looking for a quick cheat sheet that will position the whole thing in one page i've got one for you i've got a page a one page document pdf where i've shown i've put the different things that you need to do to rebuild friendship in your marriage and i've done a video to I explain it to you so you can put that cheat sheet on your fridge or somewhere prominent in your home and as you look at it it reminds you of what you need to do it reminds you of the contents of the video if you want that check in the description of this video and uh, click on the link and download the friendship re rebuilding cheat sheet uh, and of course when you get my email you can respond at any time you can ask your question via email i would answer you on the video 
and i will respond to your email i want to declare over you that it is well with you you are blessed you will always have reason to celebrate in the name of our lord jesus christ and so until we meet again tomorrow same time same channel same place invite friends let the lord continue to be your great strength remember gentleness is a fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is gentleness all right continue to love like jesus and make mega impact all right bye for now god bless you